Kanye West once famously tweeted, Too much emphasis is put on originality. But it seems that some rappers who admire Kanye took that advice a little too seriously. Of course, there is a difference between being inspired, paying homage, and straight up stealing someone else's work. It's nothing new when one artist accuses another of stealing. It's happened across genres. And even though mostly it's just a verbal fight, many times the dispute turns into a legal one. Even though it's all subjective, sometimes the similarities are too much to leave any doubt. Here are only some of the rappers who have been caught stealing from other rappers. Musically, of course. Wiz Khalifa versus Maximilian. Seems like not even the biggest names in hip-hop are safe from controversy surrounding the originality of their songs. Wiz Khalifa was accused of stealing by a Pennsylvania rapper named Maximilian, who proceeded in 2012 to file a 2.3 million lawsuit against not only Wiz himself, but also two other songwriters, along with a few record companies. Maximilian said that his song Pink and Yellow was obviously where Wiz ripped off what's probably his most famous song, Black and Yellow. But then we have to ask, is there really a case here? When we listen to Pink and Yellow, we must confess that there was indeed a resemblance. But was it really stolen? Black and Yellow featured on Khalifa's debut LP, Rolling Papers, which was released in 2011. The track earned him both a number one single in America and spot number five in the official UK singles chart. Perhaps the rapper was just annoyed that Wiz's take on the song was so insanely popular. But Wiz's version was catchier and wasn't exactly a shameful ripoff of what Maximilian did. There's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from another artist and paying homage to their work. Everyone does that. Drake and Forte. Renowned San Francisco-based rapper Forte made Drake hand over a lot of money as compensation for a verse Drake stole in 2014. Play this Club by Forte is one of the most mainstream albums to ever be released from the Bay Area. Thinking this blatant stealing would go unnoticed is pretty surprising. On YG's extremely loud and well-liked debut album, My Crazy Life, Drake is featured on one of the LP's more famous songs, the DJ Mustard produced Who Do You Love? And the opening lines are almost identical to the ones Forte wrote. Anyone can tell that he just switched it around a little, otherwise it's pretty much the same. Frankie J, who manages Forte, told KQED that Drake still hasn't pulled through on a hundred thousand payment he said he would dish out for lifting the lyrics like he did. A fraction of the royalties from Who Do You Love, which don't exclude Drake's verse, are currently for sale on Royalty Exchange, a website where you can auction off royalties. The auction also includes royalties for Players Club and Tupac's Only God Can Judge Me, which gave credit to the rapper Forte as a songwriter who was involved in the process. Though the seller has decided not to give out their name, Frankie J went on the record and confirmed our suspicions that it is indeed Forte behind all of this. Nicki Minaj vs. Brinks Billions American singer and rapper Nicki Minaj is known for being in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. She was slapped with a lawsuit filed by Queen's rapper Brinks Billions of $240 million for stealing his song Rich Sex. According to information shared by Digital Music News, Jawara Headley, aka Brinks Billions, has accused Nicki Minaj, along with a team behind her, of ripping off his song Rich Sex. Billions went so far as to document a very long 100-page complaint to the New York Federal Court towards the end of last year. In the complaint copy, it suggests that besides Nicki, the other parties include Universal Music Group, Cash Money Records, Minaj's Tokyo Ninja label, Republic Records, and Young Money Entertainment. It was stated in there that Brinks was the only only person behind Rich Sex, and there were only a couple other co-writers. Nicki and Brinks actually knew each other and were sort of acquaintances before all this business too. It was actually Brinks made her listen to Rich Sex. Now it would appear that Nicki Minaj released the stolen song and is almost entirely made up of Brinks' Rich Sex. In the lawsuit, Brinks demands $200 million from all involved parties and $10 million from Nicki Minaj on four counts, so it sums up to $240 million total. 50 Cent vs Pineapple City Pineapple City, a New Jersey rapper, accused 50 Cent of straight up copying the beat from her new song, Rose Color for his new single, On Something. She claims that 50 Cent and his team started off by asking about taking the beat for Rose Colored the previous year. According to her story, she gave them the beat for the song and a little while after doing that, 50 and his engineer ghosted her. She also said that shortly after, 50 blocked her on Instagram too. I was super, super excited when 50 reached out to her. You know what I mean? I'm definitely a 50 Cent fan. Kai Miller told me to send the instrumental to him, which I did, and I heard nothing back, is what she had to say. After her fans pointed out that one of 50's latest tracks bore an eerie resemblance to Rose Colored, she was shocked and couldn't quite bring herself to believe what had happened. She tried to contact 50 Cent and Kai Miller and make some sense of all this, but was ignored and was thus forced to make the issue a public matter. After the matter was in the public sphere, she said they reached out to her. She said that as soon as the post was made a couple of days ago, Kai Miller called her back after ghosting her and said that 50 would give me 12 bars on his song on something, which to me I wasn't too sure about. Like I said, I still just want 50 Cent to call me. Like I said, 50, I got all the love for you, bro, but I just feel like it's a respectable thing. Eminem versus Hot Styles. Places the third single from Eminem's eighth official album, the Marshall Mathers LP2, Rap God, was not only critically acclaimed, but also nominated for a Grammy, mainly because of Eminem's insanely smooth flow and expansive vocabulary. The song even broke a very interesting record that had nothing to do with streams or charts. It was entered in Guinness Book of World Records for the most words spoken in one song. There were some controversial lyrics that caused an uproar, but Eminem also used Hot Styles' flow on Looking Boy. Hot Styles members went on the record in an interview in 2013 and explained that they were offended that Slim didn't contact them first to ask if they'd be okay 
with this. They decided to release their own song, a diss track called Rap Fraud. It didn't stop there. They also went on to file a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Both parties reached an agreement in 2016. Tory Lanez versus Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar's good kid, Mad City, despite being fairly recent, has already been regarded by many as being one of the best albums in rap ever, period. The fourth song on the album, The Art of Peer Pressure, is extremely skillfully written and draws you in. The album had no filler, and fans could appreciate it from start to finish without having to skip any tracks. Lanes was a fan too, but took the love for the album to a whole new level. On Lanes' first album, I told you, the Canadian artist is almost singing 4AM Flex with the same beat. Here the similarities were so much that it couldn't be anything other than a homage to Kendrick. TJX6 vs Lil Pump Shortly after Lil Pump uploaded a teaser of a new song in the works, TJX6 exposed Pump for copying his flow. TJ went to Instagram to repost a video of Pump listening to the song, captioned, Wow, everybody tag at Lil Pump for stealing my flow. Lil Pump's reply to Detroit rapper's accusation that they copied his flow. In a video uploaded to social media, Pump didn't even have to say the TJ's name to insinuate who he's attacking. Stealing whose flow is what he shouted into the camera. No one really went to court or took any officiated action. So let's just allow the fans to decide. Future vs. K. Sometime after Future released his grunge influence track, Shit, K released a very popular OG Bobby Johnson, which is almost an exact replica of Pluto's flow when it comes to how the lyrics and beat is structured. Some are going so far as to say that the song is an unofficial remix. They were so similar that even Aesop Rocky went on the record to say that the songs were indeed too similar for it to be a coincidence. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these controversies was your favorite? Did we miss any? Comment below and let us know what you think. Before you go, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We hope you enjoyed watching.